Thank you for joining me for another Quick Hits Conversation. Today with me, I have Sarah Oblick Spiker, Stuart Wiggins, and Tim Hawks. Today, I would like to talk about what is leadership? Stuart, kick us off. Well, there's a lot of different ways to describe leadership. And I think that each person has, with their definition of what they believe leadership is, leadership is influencing others either directly or indirectly to accomplish a common task. Hmm. So for example, if you're in the military and you want someone to take on a mission that they might risk their life and lose their life, leadership is they take that role because they know that you've trained them, prepared them to go on that mission, even though they might die and that they're gonna come back and survive. That's what leadership is. But isn't in the military, using that example, if they don't, there's some pretty serious consequences. So I, I don't know if I agree if that's leadership. So well, let me say this. Having been in the military, I will tell you that the difference between successful operation and a failed operation is the leadership that the leaders provide. Let's get super controversial here. I think if in a leadership conversation, if somebody brings up the military, I always cringe. Because my thought is that, no, this is not a good example of leadership. Now, sorry, folks, if, if you are ex-military, I have a lot of respect for you. That's not that's not in question here. But I think what we're not we're not talking about leadership. We're talking about followership here rather than leadership in terms mm. of that military thing. So I think so for me, I I take the firefighter example. So if you imagine you're in charge of a group of fire people, you go to a fire, there's somebody dangling out the window and they need rescuing. Then, then a leader will step up and say, you do that, you do that, you do that. And everyone goes, yeah, okay, boss, we'll do that. And they take over. When they get back to the station and they sit down and they do a debrief, a different leader needs to appear, which is how is everyone? How did it go? Did everyone, is everyone all right with that? Now they're mm -hmm. two very different types of leader but they're both leadership. So part of, I think what Stuart said that did resonate with me was influencing others towards a common goal. I totally agree with that, but I think we can easily mix up leadership as being telling people what to do and them doing it. Actually, I agree with you. I just think that that's where the issue is, defining what leadership is. I also think we're in a stage right now where um, we're experiencing this dynamic of definition changing, of examples changing. And just like you were addressing, you know, there are hard skills and there are soft skills. And soft skill used to be uh, associated with women as, you know, em em being empathetic and being gentle and being emotional. And now more and more we're seeing those are the traits of a good leader that is able to bring that, whether it's in organization or at home, in a relationship, because leadership is not just defined within an organization. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a former athlete, I will never forget, I was at a job interview right out of college and uh, it was, it just happened to be a former military person who was interviewing me. And he's like, oh, you were co-captain of your basketball team. This is so cool. So you were a leader. What kind of leader were you? And I don't necessarily tell people what to do and, you know, expect them to do. I lead by example. I inspire them and they feel um, inspired to follow from their, from their space. But I will never forget his comment when he goes like, why were you a co-captain? Does that mean you were not a good enough leader that you needed two other people there? So back to the team's point, you know, there's so many different kinds of leadership that even within the same team, we need different people who lead differently, who communicate differently uh, to really accomplish the common goal. I wonder whether leadership is believing something strong enough to get people to follow you. And then where does the to toxicity come into the place? Because then you have people who are really toxic and have this huge mm -hmm. karmic attraction when people will blindly follow, even if it means, you know. And that brings up the great subject of, you know, and uh, uh, again, I hate to do it, because was Adolf Hitler a good leader? Well, I think he was. He was, okay, he was a bad man. He did some very bad things, but he managed to inspire sufficient millions of people to follow him. Is that good leadership? I mean, if you, if you can divorce leadership from the direction it takes people, Yes. Uh, totally and is that agree. a thing? Can you can you can you separate leadership from the direction it takes people? I think you have to almost silo it. When I say that it's circumstantial, 
I could sit here and very easily argue that leadership is action. I mean, depending upon the type of role that you have, people observe your activities and that's a form of leadership. Well, leadership is also verbal. I mean, in the, in the realm of politics, and I'll use Hitler as an example if you want, there's an individual, his leadership was primarily what he articulated, what he verbalized. So that makes me think, it makes me wonder, is the definition of leadership different if you're middle management, if you're upper management, or if you're the CEO? Is it the same word, but means completely different things? Well, you're touching a different group of people. I mean, if you're, if you're a first line supervisor, the way you inter, the people you interact with are totally different. But and you're you, doing development. Exactly. But that doesn't mean as the CEO, you're not developing because you're developing your vice presidents and senior vice presidents, and you're preparing them for roles of increased responsibility also. And the way you lead is different as opposed to people that are down there at the rank and file. This is a difficult 10 minutes. I would also offer at that point, you know, before we even get to action, there has to be thought leadership. It has to be a visionary leader who has the big picture first. So we know what kind of action is going to be aligned to take and you need mobilizers. So how do we then, you know, rank that? So it's still right. It is challenging. So I've got some things. Is leadership action? Dalai Lama can lead without saying much at all. But is that uh, action, but, is, does action so, have to be aggressive or can it be passive? That's passive. Well, uh, true, <laughs> passive is an in, inaction is action. I'll give you that. I think, so I'm thinking, I, I'm trying to unpick this a little bit. And I, what I'm thinking is leadership only exists if there's a follower, right? You, can, you can't be a leader in a vacuum. You can't turn up on an island with no one else there. You can be a leader of yourself, I guess. So therefore leadership must exist with followers. So I'm wondering then, is leadership defined by if you ask a follower, do you like working for this person? And they say, yes, you have a good leader, regardless of their abilities, skills and how they behave. I think being liked is a whole separate conversation okay, that may right, or may no, not have anything to do with leadership. Let's not confuse that. Would you do you are you happy to follow this person? Let's put it that way, then. You're right. Liking is a different matter. Um, yeah. And if if somebody has followers that are willing to follow, therefore leadership, good leadership exists. No, not necessarily, because some people will follow just out of morbid curiosity. That makes them a good leader. Does it? If people are just going along to see how bad the train wreck is? I'm already questioning it now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay, so I've got another storyline here. When I work with leaders, I do a lot of one-to-one -one work with leaders, and all the work I do is directed towards making them more authentic and making mm -hmm. them more themselves and more self-confident. You know, Sarah talked about you know um, women in the world be having a different sort of leadership style to, to men. But it, but it, having said that, if you were work, working with any tough person, it's all towards authenticity. So therefore, is a good leader somebody who is truly authentic? with followers i'm a chameleon and so it depends on the audience of what type what traits of leadership i project so i've had some very high level roles and depending upon the audience that was the type of leadership that i portrayed but if i was talking to people on the lo loading dock my leadership style was in a way that they could appreciate and understand and not make them feel diminished and you're still authentic version of yourself in each role, just like as a parent, right? Uh, you call kids to a dinner table in one way, you're still yourself when you turn to your spouse and you call them to a dinner table in a different way. Mm. And, and this is exactly the situational leadership model, isn't it? it? That you know, If you look at the situational leadership model, it talks about um, directing, guiding, participating, delegating, all those sorts of things. But we can be them in our authentic selves, can't we? We can move, we can, e in fact, it's easier to shift the gear between those types of leadership when we are more authentic. But that is our 10 minutes. So we have to cut us off there with all of this, what is leadership self? And we'll have to do it again soon. Thank you so much for having this conversation with me and I'll talk to you again.